Take four. All right. Trying to do this as a one-shot video with no edits. Kind of tough because I have a lot to say in this video and I'm trying to talk really fast so I don't waste your time. This video is about how do you make money as an expat. And I've held off on making this video for a long time. I really wanted to talk about this, but I didn't know enough. And some of what I knew was wrong. I don't want to bullshit you guys. So I really waited till I felt like I knew how to talk about this um, honestly. So there are a lot of different kinds of expats out there. And this video really isn't so much for you retired expats because you've got your retirement income, unless it's not enough and you're still working. And then if that's the case, stay tuned. But those of us that are still working, those of us that are not ready to retire, how do you go overseas and make money? I'm also specifically going to talk about Ecuador because that's where I'm at and I've learned enough about the culture here that I think I can talk about it honestly and intelligently. So one of the biggest and motorcycle, one of the newest um, types of expats are digital nomads. Now, these people really have positioned themselves in life to call the shots. These are people that work remotely, digital, and they can work remotely anywhere in the world. Nomad. It's kind of a new catchphrase, but um, it's a great concept and it's really taking off. There's more of you every day and you fall into a, a lot of different categories. Some of you are simply English teachers online. You're teaching in China and you're living in Ecuador, um, minimizing your costs while maximizing your profit. Others, you're more of a traditional digital nomad. You're a computer programmer, you're, you're a software engineer or something like that. And then there's there's a whole range in between where you, you maybe you do copyright, maybe you are um, a social media guru, maybe you're a YouTuber like me. Um, so there's the digital nomads. And if you have been thinking about this whole category of work, um, I strongly recommend looking into it and trying to shape your career in that direction, because I think that's the future for a lot of us. And it gives you the most power to negotiate and the most freedom to choose to live in a very low cost location while working for some company in Europe or the United States and making a, a decent income. Digital nomads. Um, then there's folks like me. Now, I've been an expat for about 10 years and I kind of bridged the gap. I do a lot of digital nomad work now, but when I started out, I just did nuts and bolts work. I'm an electrician. So I've got a particular skill that is in demand enough that there are companies out there that will fly me to all sorts of places all over the world to work for them. And they'll pay my, my airfare, my food, my housing, they'll pay for everything and pay me as much or more than I would make, sometimes twice as much as I would make in the US to do that job. Now that sometimes takes me to places that other people don't want to go. Um, I've spent uh, many years in Afghanistan. Not a lot of folks want to go to Afghanistan. I go there because um, it's actually not as bad as most people think. And you're able to make a lot of money. Um, I've gone to Antarctica. I've gone to Greenland. I've gone to the Marshall Islands. Um, so there's, there's that kind of... Hello, Ian. There's that kind of... Uh, expat job where you're flown to whatever part of the world a lot of there's a lot of work in in Saudi Arabia and um, Kuwait and places like that there's a lot of oil work unfortunately a lot of the time doing that type of work um, you're working on projects that you don't necessarily want to be working on um, I get a mix sometimes I'm working to support science organizations in Greenland and, that, and Antarctica other times it's military stuff and it's um, it's not awesome, but it pays the bills. So that's another way to make a living as an expat. But 
this is now I'm going to get into where I was hesitant to make this video and I really wanted to understand what I was talking about a little better before I opened my mouth. Here in Ecuador, I see like once a week people ask, well, how can I get a job in Ecuador? How can I make money in Ecuador? And the answer is to do what the locals do. Don't think like an expat. Don't make a business that is designed for expats. If you start a hostel, if you start a bike rental company, if you start some tourist business, you're targeting tourists and you're targeting expats, but you're missing 99.9% .9 of the customers. You're missing the locals. What are the locals buying? Where do they spend their money? What do they like? What I just experienced in this family where we live now is opening an ice cream shop. Um, in order to be successful, in order to have a good chance of being successful, you need to look around and see what other successful businesses are doing. So my father-in-law looked around this neighborhood and said, hey, ice cream, there's, there's none on the street. We can do this. The investment's almost nothing. Um, I think we started with like maybe $50 in supplies. We're now, not every day, but most days, we're selling more ice cream than we can make. So that's the lesson. Expats always try to create businesses with people like themselves in mind. So they're looking for real estate. So they, they also get into like trying to sell real estate or another motorcycle or they're, um, they stay at hostels. So they think I would love to open a hostel. This has been, this has been the, my mistake um, a couple times. Instead, before you start that sort of expat oriented business that is probably going to fail, start a business that caters to locals. Start a business that is not so different from what the other locals do. And just look around your neighborhood, see what it's missing, but other neighborhoods have and have customers and do that. And then bring your expat work ethic, your ideas to making it a little bit unique. So here we have a little ice cream business, but um, it's got a little bit of an expat twist and it's got a, a few flavors and names that have actually become quite popular that I came up with, but don't, don't try to reinvent the wheel. Don't try to do the business that is too different from what you see around you. That is my lesson for you guys. What do you think? Yeah. Anyway, um, that's all I gotta say. I think I got this in this video. Hope I didn't waste too much of your time. Talk to you later.